Hey, welcome back. So let's hope that uh, things work a little bit better this time around. Um, I'm a little concerned it might be my USB cable, so uh, I'm not sure the reboot's going to help, but we'll uh, we'll deal with it as we come here. Okay, so we're in the combat phase. We just finished doing these steps here, and we're going to do these. And yeah, I apologize. It's going to be a while to get through all these, but... Um, Basically, uh, if I can read to you what it says, it says fast move and attack. So all of our units that are fast go first, and then all of the enemy units get to go, and then any slow unit uh, units that we have get to go, and that's the end of the turn. And we just keep going until we run out of turns. We have six turns in the game. All right, so uh, we probably need to start talking about our units. So first of all, we have our Panther, which looks like this. And uh, I'm just going to take the top card here. Beck is the, uh, the commander. Uh, he has close combat, which means he gets to roll an extra dice if he's at range zero. And you can see there that he has a plus three attack at range zero um, here. All right, so he's our veteran. The overdrive just means that he can move uh, an extra space. So normally they can only move one, he can move two. Uh, he has to take extra stress if he does that though. Okay, so um, it does say minus one attack when moving. So I'm gonna get a minus one to my die roll if I move. But if I can get into the same space as whatever I'm attacking, I can attack uh, an extra time. Now uh, he's slow which means that he's not going to go first. So we're going to have to wait with him. Next up is my artillery, uh, Gerber. Here's the uh, commander. He's got spotter and marksman, and he's on an 88. So the 88 shoots at a range 1 to 3. And in fact, they can't shoot at range 0, so that's a big issue for them. Um, he can shoot up to three hexes away. The spotter keyword allows him to ignore line of sight penalties. So that building that you see uh, in the middle of the screen does not block his line of sight. He can shoot right through it. And then the marksman just says that if they're in the building, we get to ignore their heavy cover. So they don't get any cover bonuses against him. And if he's shooting at more than range zero, he gets a plus two. And uh, the range zero bonus is actually worthless because... He doesn't get to shoot at range zero. All right, so that's our next guy. And uh, just to help out, um, the 88's right here, and the Panther is right here. Okay, so we have a machine gun nest that's right here, and then we have a transport and a, um, uh, a Panzer II. So let me show you the machine gun nest next. That's this infantry commander. Now he's cautious, and what that means is if he moves, he doesn't get to shoot. And my camera issue is still happening, that jerk. So just got that going. So if he moves, he can't shoot. Obviously, if you move and then attack with this guy, you get all kinds of issues. You get two stress, you get minus two. But right now, because he's cautious, uh, he can't shoot if he were to move. So uh, I'm probably going to want him to sit tight and just fight from where he's at. And then the uh, Panzer II commander is Vogel. This guy, I picked him because he levels up within uh, 15 experience points. He goes from this recruit all the way to legendary. So he's amazing that way. I highly recommend him. Uh, but right now he has a plus zero, plus one, or minus one, and one of the crappiest tanks in the game. But, you know, that was a 1939 tank. It was really good for 1939, okay? Um, he's here just to absorb um, experience points. And then we have our transport guy. So he's our transport. And the transport has no armor attack at all, but he does have a six to attack uh, infantry with, and he can transport other infantry. The weird thing, they nerfed the transport rules in this game in the base game, uh, you could transport and attack. So, like, um, 
for example, the transport could move an infantry, and then the infantry can strike, take his turn and still attack. Uh, because the infantry didn't do a movement as part of his turn, he doesn't even get the negative bonuses, right? Because the he, that's the benefit of having a transport in your crew, right? Is the transport uh, moved you, so that way you're not moving on your own, and uh, you don't get all the benefits and stress or or the penalties and stress. But in this game, if you transport a unit, that unit's done. It doesn't get to uh, do anything. It's it's movement and its attack is over. So transport uh, in general is pretty lame. Uh, the only thing that's nice about it is it has a speed of two, so you can move, you know, two spaces along. And uh, I want to point out that we have a road here, and the road basically says you get one free road to road move each turn. And I'm wondering if that road also requires us to grab the other tile. Let me look. Yep, it says to draw the other road tile. Oh, those jerks. Okay. So let's see if I can find it. So that house that those uh, infantry ran into doesn't exist. And even more interesting is the road is a free movement point. So what they're saying is, is that we weren't supposed to have this tile here. It needed to be this tile. So these two guys are here, and this guy. Nothing changes movement-wise, because no one's moved along the road yet. Um, but that's how the scenario would look. So the house gives these guys heavy cover. Um, but now that the house is gone, they don't have heavy cover anymore. As I said, this 88 didn't care about heavy cover anyways. Um, but what that made is that this uh, machine gun unit is now quite powerful. Okay, so uh, now that I showed you everything that we have, um, we got to do fast first and then slow. Um, I know we didn't talk about it, but every guy that I brought before you is not fast. We're all slow. And this is the part I'm most worried about. Um, we're going to have to endure some attacks from the enemy uh, first before we even get a chance to punch back. So with them doing all the aggressive advancing that they did, we're actually in a bit of a pickle. So um, so one of the things that uh, is not listed, but you need to do at the beginning of your combat. Oh, there goes the camera again. All right. So um, uh, don't worry about this part. I'm actually, I actually put right here. This is what I'm looking for. We got to roll a D10. Okay, if I roll a 1 to a 4, the enemy will use a d6 for determining how aggressive they are in combat. If I roll a 5 to a 10, then they're going to use a d10 instead. And you'll understand what that means in a second. So let's roll Autobots. So I rolled a 10. So they're going to use a d10 for determining their actions. So uh, their actions are listed here. And it goes from 0 to 12. So when I roll for them, they're going to um, you know, do whatever uh, we roll. If I'm rolling a d6, it's only going to go up to 5 to 6. So 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 or more doesn't actually happen. But I'm actually going, I rolled a, I'm getting a d10. So now more actions are available. And the further down it goes, the more aggressive they get. This column here, by the way, is for tanks, anti-tanks, and armored cars. This one's for rifle, half, and MGs. And then trucks, mortars, and anti-tank guns are here. So um, there's three different commands based on what type of unit it is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to roll a die now for them. And uh, whatever we roll, we then just go across and do whatever the command says. Okay? Um, and this is for everybody. And like I said, uh, we just determined, based on this little chart here, that we're going to be rolling a d10, because I rolled a 10. If I would have rolled a 1 to 4, it would have been a d6. OK. So uh, I think without further ado, let's see what they're going to do. So I rolled a 5, 
and the 5 is going to line up with this. They actually give you a little token to put down so you don't forget. So uh, we go from left to right. So the tanks and the anti-tanks, there are no anti-tanks in this one, but there are armored cars. So most of the units are going to advance if they cannot attack. Okay, so I know this is probably a little difficult for you to see, and maybe it might help to zoom in. Let's see if I can do that. Does that help at all? I bet it does. Okay, so uh, this is an armored car right here, and this is the tank. And uh, they both had this has a range of two, and that has a range of three. So uh, if the building was here, this building would have blocked their line of sight, but it's not. So the uh, the tank with a range of three can shoot anywhere here or here. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm actually zoomed in too much. There's a, so let me try to zoom it back out. That's the whole way out. Sure, we'll do that for now. Now that you've seen where everything is, but so I have three units here, and that's um, <coughs> that is uh. This tank basically can hit any of our guys. Doesn't matter who it is. The armored car, though, can only shoot two away, so he can hit here and here, and that's it. This tank can hit here and here, and same with this tank. Three here, here, and this tank can hit here and here. This armored car can only shoot two away, so it's going to advance, so it'll cross the river. Uh, so that armored car is done. With his, with his turn. So, okay, so what do we do with the attacks? Uh, the enemy attack priority is the friendly unit with the best chance to hit with the lowest defense. I don't have any extra defense on anybody uh, other than we just got to look at the unit. So, for example, the machine gun nest here has a... Oh, camera just went out again. This machine gun unit here has a defense of two. The 88, for example, has a defense of one. And our Panther has a defense of three. The transport has a defense of one. And the, uh, the Panzer II has a defense of one. So we get to decide when there are equal... Um, values which one it's going to attack. However, there's also a, a range modification. Uh, they get a minus one at range two and a minus two at range three. So that behooves them to attack at range two. So this tank is going to attack the 88 because the 88 only has a defense of one. This armored car is going to do the same thing. They're actually going to ignore the the MG nest because the MG nest um, uh, has a higher defense value. All right, so everything's attacking the 88. This tank here is also attacking the 88. This ta tank is attacking the 88. And this tank is also attacking the 88. So I'm going to get attacked by all four tanks and one armored car. It's This is going to be a slaughter fest. My 88 may not survive. All right, so i got to get some extra dice out now because uh, we've got to come up with a system. And uh, when you do an attack, you always roll two dice. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, two red dice, a blue and a white. Okay? So what this is, is uh, when they attack, they're going to roll two dice. Those are going to be the red dice. So that'll be the attacker's roll. Okay? Then uh, let's say that uh, one of the red dice hits. Then we roll one die... And if it rolls at our defense value or less, then we get to um, block the attack, okay? If it hits, right? So if they hit, we get a chance to block the attack. Um, if they don't hit, then we don't have to, to roll. If both of their device hits, or both of their dice hit, then both we get to roll two dice, to, and we can block one or we can block both. It depends on how well we roll. Um, our defense is only one. <laughs> 
it goes up if you're, you know, inside of a, a building or have better cover. So since our defense is only one, uh, we have to have a miracle roll. We have to roll one out of ten to be able to block. So in order to speed up the game and not be rolling a hundred times, uh, this is the system. The two red dice are going to be the attack dice, and it doesn't matter which one hits versus doesn't. The blue die is the first defense die. The white die is the second. So the white die is only going to count if he hits twice with both of his attacks. Okay? So if those two red dice both hit, then we use the white die. So if he hits with just one of the red die, the blue die is what's used to block the attack. If the white die ends up being a one and the blue die is not a one, it doesn't matter. We don't get to count it. Because uh, it matters because you're supposed to roll separately for each attack. And I don't get to roll two dice and take the better of the two. That's, that's the whole reason I'm explaining this. So we're going to roll them all at once because that helps speed it up a bit. Um, I, I'm extremely nervous. I, I, don't, uh, uh, I don't think that we're going to survive this. And so our 88's already in a boatload of trouble. Um, okay, so let's just see uh, what comes out of this. So uh, rolling for uh, the first tank. Uh, they hit with just a two. That's what makes this such a difficult uh, thing. Now, they're attacking two away, so they suffer a minus one to their roll. And um, so they're going to get a, um, they're going to need a three to hit instead of a two, which helps a tiny bit, but it's not, um, Now, if they had to move to attack, then they would have also gotten more minus to their rolls, but none of them had to move because they moved up so much. And dang it, the camera's out again. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm very nervous here, but we got to do this four times for the tanks. Um, now, the tanks that are attacking at three spaces away, uh, they get a, a lot bigger penalty, but this tank is two spaces away. Uh, we have two of them. No, we only have one tank that's two spaces away, so we're going to roll for that one. And so you can see here the four and the six, they both hit, and then the five and the six don't block, so we just got two hits. So... Um, I have two hits uh, from just one of the tanks. Um, so now we got to take our cup. And there should be a cup filled with all this type of stuff. And we're going to draw two hits. And the two hits we draw, um, there's two sides to it. So you have that and this. But the hit that you need is this one. Okay, so you flip it over to the uh, camouflage side. So this is awesome, no effect. And then this one is a suppress. So uh, we put the suppress on the um, on the 88. And uh, there's a chart over here that explains everything. So suppress is suffer one stress or cannot attack next action. OK, I'll make that. I'll figure out what I'm going to do once I resolve all these uh, attacks. I don't think I have to decide that right at this moment. I think I can wait. Or let me look it up. After you move each enemy, resolve its attack before going on to the next enemy. If more than one German unit is equally close, attack the one that requires the lowest roll. Choose the one with the lowest defense. And then place the counter on the unit card. During the unit's next time to act, you choose whether to suffer stress or not attack. If you choose not to attack, then you can discard it. Or if you take the stress, you can discard it. Okay, so the suppress, uh, I guess out of all things, uh, I will take that. Okay, so now i got to roll for the other three tanks. And the tanks are one, two, three away. So 
when you're three away, they get a minus two to their die roll. So now they hit with a four or better. And I got to do this three times. So uh, that's a six and a two. So this one missed. And the uh, blue, of course, uh, is a 10. So uh, they hit me once. All right. So that's one. And let's draw. The commander's wounded. And I think when a commander's wounded, they're not going to be able to attack or do anything. It's one SO point to heal, cannot enter battle. Um, what happens in the battle? No immediate effect. So uh, if he gets a second wound token, he's killed in action. Uh, and then you just can't enter a new battle like the next day unless you pay an SO point. Okay, so now we go to the next tank. And you can see I got a three, a five, a four, and a nine. So that's one more hit. <sighs> oh, I had it. And it dropped back in the... Oh, here it is. trying to oh. yeah and the camera stopped recording again very annoying okay so the uh, this one's exposed and what exposed is is it mean that's actually uh, not a bad one to us it's plus two to be hit starting the next turn until it moves so not this turn. Um, but uh, yeah, OK. Uh, that was. We got one more uh, tank, one more. All right, so this white is a block. However, the uh, seven is a miss. I'm sorry, the, the three here is the miss. So uh, the white one doesn't block. The blue one also doesn't block. So we got screwed there. So one more hit. I guess if anything, uh, we're showing that you can take multiple hits and possibly survive. Um, so that's at least a, a good thing. And I got another uh, exposed marker. So. Uh, and yes, the expose just means it's plus two chances to hit. So now I got to draw for the armored car. The armored car rolls a seven to hit. Um, I'm going to show you again his stats. So there you can see he attacks with a range two. Uh, oh, but the infantry attack is a five. Oh, crap. Crap, 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 crap. The tanks attack with a three, not a two, because this is a uh, soft attack, not a hard attack. Ooh. And then that three would have turned into a four in the case of the first tank, and then a five. I'm already screwing this up, folks. Here's the mistake I made. I used the two value that you see at the top, that black two. That red three is what I was supposed to use. So it's a little harder for them to hit infantry or the 88 in this case. So I actually played in, in expert mode. <laughs> um, that three means they would have possibly missed me more. So for example, if he rolled a, a five at three spaces away, that's a miss for him because he would have gotten a minus two. Um, actually a five still would have been a hit, but uh, a four, I mean, would have been a minus two to his die roll. So uh, those are the things that I gotta make sure I don't screw up. And I did. But uh, anyways, as you can see here, this guy hits with a five instead of a seven because he's better against infantry. So let's roll. And we have an eight, which is going to be a hit. And then we have a four here, which is a miss. OK, so uh, he did get one hit on us. So. The armored car 
does something to us, and we're immobile. Okay, so uh, what does immobile mean? Um, we can suffer one stress or cannot move next action. So it's just like suppress. Immobilize and suppress both seem to be the exact same thing. Interesting. Okay. Um, that was just them. Now the riflemen get to go. And this is going to be just as bad. Um, we move over to the rifle and they're going to advance to cover. They're not necessarily... Uh, so we've got to see what advance... They advance to the heaviest adjacent cover towards closest friendly unit. Uh, the camera just went out again. So they advance to adjacent cover towards closest friendly unit, but um, they're going to attack no matter what. That's the, the part I'm trying to get at here. Advance to cover, uh, they only advance if they uh, if they don't have anybody to attack. Uh, American units use each enemy may only attack one German unit each turn. Oh, this thing's beeping at me as if my camera disconnected, but it really didn't. Okay, a rifle unit gains Give me a second here. Where's the Tiger Leader book? I'm going to pause real quick. Okay, I'm back. Uh, all right, so they're advancing to cover, but they will not advance if the cover does not improve. Uh, this whole map has no cover, uh, except for very specific. Actually, there's no cover at all anywhere except for here. This is the only place that has cover. So what that means is none of the units are going to advance. Um, now, if they can't attack, they will... No, they don't advance, because that's what advance to cover means. If they can't move to better cover, they won't advance. So advance to cover, um, they're all gonna stay still. So uh, these rifle, all three of these, are within one range of our units. And unfortunately, uh, we're going to get attacked now by uh, these two are going to attack the 88. And then this one will attack the MG nest, because that's the only one in his range. This one back here can't attack anybody and will not advance. So uh, that's our situation. Now, what do they hit with? Well, they have, let me show you, they have a red four there uh, at range one. Um, so they can hit uh, soft targets up to range one away with a four. Now, a range one attack um, does not have any penalties. It's only if they go to range two or more that they start taking penalties. So, um, yeah, that's it. So the 88 is getting pounded right now. And let's roll some more. So that's a hit. There's a two, which is still not good enough. And then there's a four, which is another hit. So two hits, again, against the 88. I don't know how much more we can take. Um, so... I drew something and I don't understand what it means because it says there's no effect. <laughs> so uh, let me look up what this means. No effect. Like it doesn't say no effect. It just... Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so I drew... Um, 
I drew a casualty marker. And if I ever draw a second casualty marker, then um, he's killed. And then I drew another exposed. So I have like three of those right now. So he's in bad, bad shape. He's already wounded. And then let's go to the next infantry. And I hit again twice. And again, uh, nothing I can do. I just take two more hits. Having slow units is not a good deal. Um, I got another exposed and a no effect. So uh, that's, that's getting uh, uh, cameras down again. Everything about this battle is not going right. Okay, so what's the lesson learned here? Uh, don't put your 88 up front. You know what I did was I moved him forward thinking that I needed to shoot really far back. Um, I'm using my mouse as if you can see. I, I put him here. I really needed to keep my 88 in the rear. Um, I moved him forward thinking I was going to have to shoot way back here. Um, that was not the case at all. I made a huge blunder there. Um, and I'm just lucky the guy's not dead. I mean, let's look at, just let me just show you. Uh, this is what his uh, commander card looks like right now. Now, these are going to give the enemy plus two to their attack value next turn. And then they go away automatically. Um, and there's four of them. So basically, it's a guaranteed hit. This is going to give me stress if I want to go next turn. Uh, he's wounded. This is another stress one. And then this is like, it doesn't do anything. But if I draw a second one, then he's killed. So um, it's just ugly. Not not good. All right, and then I'm going to roll for the uh, against my MG nest. And so um, I have uh, a nine and a three, so it's one hit against the MG nest. And then I have a three and a two. So this two, uh, we have a defensive two, so the MG nest actually blocks the attack. So even though we got hit, we blocked it. All right, so that's how the defense works. Um, I sort of like the old days where the defense just um, made their, they needed to roll better on their die. But um, that's how that works. Okay, so we avoided that uh, blunder. And they've gone, and now we get to finally go with everybody that we have. So the 88 can make them suffer uh, badly. And I, I definitely want to do that. Um, so in order for the 88 to go... I got this dude here. Uh, the fact that he's wounded doesn't change anything. But what I can do is I have to agree to take one stress for this and one stress for this. So I'm taking two stress to get rid of those two uh, things. And with him having two stress, he's still okay. And um, we're going to launch an attack against their tank. And you can see my armor piercing is a four. And I get the same penalties if I'm shooting at range. So uh, where am I shooting? I'm here, and I'm going to shoot at this tank that's two spaces away. OK, so uh, when I shoot two spaces away, I get a uh, penalty of one. So I need a five to hit. But it's the same deal. I get to roll two dice, just like he does. So let's roll. And. Uh, there's the five for a hit. And when it comes to the enemy units, uh, you just need one hit to kill them. Now, this is a five, this is his defense roll. Um, the tanks have a defense of three. So uh, that's what that three at the bottom is. So they have a higher defense value, but one hit kills them. Whereas with us, we, we draw tokens, right? Um, so this tank is destroyed. One less thing for us to worry about, right? So the 88, uh, <laughs> even though he's exposed out the yin yang, um, I probably should have moved him like away, so he takes less hits. Um, but um, my plan is, is I'm actually going to try to defend him. So now I have my MG nest here, and I'm going to shoot at this rifleman that's next to him. Okay, my MG nest. This is our situation with him. And oh, by the way, I, I forgot my leader had a plus two to his rolls. So um, we actually hit very well. 
MG Nest hits soft targets with a two. Okay, um, he has no plus bonuses because of his leader, but we're gonna go ahead and annihilate some stuff with a two. I mean, there's there's no uh, no getting around that. Camera is still disconnecting. There we go. All right, let's roll. So you can see the 10 and a 4 are a hit. And um, and so there we have the 5 and the 1. So he would have blocked the second hit, but it doesn't matter. The first hit was all we needed. Um, in fact, I don't even know why I need to roll two defense dice for him. Um, he's dead after just one hit. So uh, infantry down. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the Panzer II. Panzer II uh, doesn't get very much bonuses. In fact, none at all. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let him take some damage for a while. And uh, what I'm going to do with this guy is he has a movement of one, which normally goes to here. But with the road, you get one free road move each turn. So I'm going to move him into this space with these two riflemen. So he's going to do a range zero attack. And so uh, we're going to attack one of those riflemen and his his high explosive attack is six. So we're going to go ahead and it, his uh, leader doesn't give him any bonuses. And so I rolled a one and an eight. And then uh, he did roll a seven and a two. So let's see, the two doesn't matter. The seven, um, his defense is three. So uh, infantry destroyed. So even the Panzer II still can do something for us. And then now uh, the Panther is going to go in and do something similar. So Panther, once again, uh, moves one space. And by the way, I had a minus one to my attack because I moved. Now the Panther... is these guys. So again, I'm going to get a minus one attack for moving. Can't forget that. And then he will attack with a six. I do have a range three attack, but I'm going to move forward. So I'm going to move here and then here. And uh, I could attack that infantry, but I think instead I might try to attack uh, one of the tanks that are out here. Um, my armor piercing attack is a four. Now, I do get a plus three, though, um, for attacking in my space. So that might actually be beneficial to me to get rid of this rifleman. Hmm. The other thing is I have an overdrive where if I'm willing to take one stress, I can move one more space. And I'm contemplating that as well. You know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do overdrive and move into this space on this side of the river. And so now I'm in the same hex as that armored car. And I do have to take one stress for doing so. So I will add a stress to this guy. And uh, he has close combat. So I get to roll one extra die at close combat, and I also get a plus three to my die roll, uh, which will counteract the minus one. And you can see here, like, that one is no good, but, but there's an eight that I just rolled. Uh, so plus three minus one, I mean, that's basically a ten, and his defense is a nine. So uh, I destroyed the armor car that was in my hex. So just trying to take out as much stuff that's hurting our uh, 88 as possible. And then the last guy I have is just a transport unit, but I'm going to move the transport unit right up against that. Um... Actually, I'm going to move the transport unit. I get to move two spaces with it. So I'm going to move into the same space as the 88, so maybe I can move the 88 out of there. Now, the transport unit has a range of one. <laughs> For his attack and so uh and by the way I, I got an extra die roll with my tank so i could have used that 
So with this attack, I'm going to do um, a range one attack. And the camera just went out again. All right. And I get a plus two uh, right here, plus two to my attack. So I'm going to attack at a range one, get a plus two. I need a six to hit. But I did move. And so my plus two just cancels the negative two I get from moving. So so basically, I got a, I'm going to roll and a six hits that infantry. All right. So we have... Um, we have this one here, which is a a four, and the defense is no good for them. And then over here, uh, we have a five, so we missed, unfortunately. So that infantry lived to see another day. Um, so this crew... Yeah, I probably needed to do a better job of picking different units but uh, my mechanics and everything are on the other crew but but basically we killed a few of them but we didn't uh, do as much damage as I thought we would okay so now we're done with our turn and we're down to five turns left to go so uh, at the start of the combat step you gotta do a, uh, a battalion check so we did kill some of their units now they have three six nine ten eleven 12, 13 points left on the board. And I know uh, it's hard for you to see them, but we're, we're adding we're adding that little number that's at the top left there, right? Um, <clears throat> so I said they had 13 points, right? So you got to check it against the, uh, the battalion card. So the battalion card, if I can get it down below 10, it gets reduced to half strength. And so what happens then is... You subtract two from uh, their their role whenever you're there. It's their turn to, to act. They get a uh, minus two. Now the other thing is um, in Italy they only get a minus one. So the Americans are really stubborn. They don't want to retreat. Uh, these these lower roles are retreat. So when you're subtracting from their role, uh, you're forcing them to retreat off the map. And basically the stubborns are or the Americans are saying, no, we're not retreating. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and roll for what they're going to do. Remember, fast units go first. Um, we're not fast, so we can't do anything about that. And I rolled a two. I, I know it says six, but it was a two. Um, so that is uh, good news for us because that makes them less aggressive. Okay, so uh, the first one... For the tanks, they're going to do an cautious advance. They advance only if, by doing so, it cannot be attacked. And then, of course, they would go into heaviest cover. Now, uh, do they attack us in a cautious advance? Yes, they, they will attack anything if it's in range. Um, then the uh, riflemen are going to hold. And hold just means they don't move at all. Um, so, uh, now we got to resolve... Uh, their attacks again. So there's one, two, three tanks left. Uh, this guy is the closest. And they go after whatever's going to be the lowest dice roll for them. And so since the armor piercing is a two instead of a three, they're not going to go after the 88. They're actually going to go after our tank. Now, this tank has a uh, defense value of three. Uh, this tank over here has a um, defense value of one. But if you're attacking two hexes away, they get a minus one to their attack roll. And so this is cardinal rule of of this game. One that I'm sure I'll forget a hundred times. But um, they prioritize their attacks on what's going to give them the best attack roll. So since this guy gives them a minus one to their attack roll, even though he has the higher defense value, they still go after him because he's closer. And that's sort of the game I'm playing, is I'm moving my uh, my panther up so uh, they can shoot at the panther and not at my other softer targets. Uh, this may not be a smart move, because they hit with a two, for Pete's sakes. Um, none of them are moving, because they have the cautious advance. And uh, yeah, I got to do three tank rolls. 
this one shoots at two spaces away, no matter which one. And so this one is shooting at the uh, Panzer II, because between these two targets, this is the lower. And there you go. The camera froze up again. Jerks. Absolute jerks. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but uh, so between these two targets, this one has the lower defense. So then he's going to choose this one instead of that one. So this tank and this tank are going after the Panther. This tank here is going after the Panzer II. And then this armored car is the same deal. He's going after the Panzer II. This rifleman is shooting the 88. And this rifleman is shooting nobody. Because riflemen cannot shoot at tanks from one space away. Uh, that's another uh, rule to make sure you remember. And uh, remember, the rifleman had a hold action. So this one is holding and not doing anything. <sighs> OK, so let's let's resolve these uh, attack rolls. Um, our Panzer, just as a reminder, has a defense of three. So that does mean he's going to have a better chance at defending. But these guys hit with a two. That's pretty bad. All right, so uh, there's a one. Now, the other one, not so lucky. That's an eight. And then uh, this is a two. And remember, I said we used a blue die first. I defended against that eight. So I absorbed the first tank. And in fact, I would have absorbed the second hit, too. So no matter what they rolled, I was going to block it. So that's awesome. Right? I'm not going to roll that way every time, but one of the three tanks is already done. Here's the second tank. And yeah, not so lucky with this one. And the second tank actually hit twice. So our Panzer or our Panther is going to take two hits. And then what we do is we switch it to the other side. And so we use this side. And so it's a hole and a glancing. Um, if you watch my Thunderbolt Apache leader playthrough, glancing is like bullet holes. Uh, if you don't repair this, um, they the pilot the the commander is going to take an extra stress when he uh, gets into the tank. So the glancing is like a bullet hole. It doesn't do anything. It's just um, you're going to suffer one stress at the start of battles because uh, your tank is going to show them the signs of of being in combat. And then the hull damage doesn't do anything either, except if you get two of them, the tank's destroyed. A lot of the armor hits are about, uh, you know, the first hit, not so bad. The second hit, you're destroyed. So uh, the Panther took some damage. But remember now, the third tank is attacking the Panzer, which only has a defense of one. But this tank gets a uh, minus one to its die roll. So that two, for example, is a miss, because that tank now needs a three to hit. Uh, but the other one is a hit with a 9, and then this 9 doesn't work. That would have defended if he would have hit with both dice, but um, uh, this is the first die, if you recall. So, uh, yeah, the Panzer II is taking a hit. So let's see what he gets. Um... So... So he got a gun hit. And I was just trying to look up, OK, what does that do to him? Uh, the gun hit, he cannot attack at range 2 or 3. And it's interesting, because that guy can only attack at range 1. <laughs> so it doesn't hurt him at all. And dang it, the camera froze up again. I don't know what's going on with the software that's causing everything to disconnect so much. Um, but it's definitely being pesky. Okay, and then I'm not done, though. Now the armored car is attacking. The armored car, though, needs a 7. So not as easy for the armored car. And, of course, he rolls a 7 and a 9. But he's attacking from two spaces away, so this actually is a miss. But that one's a hit. And this is definitely a not good. And the other die was a 1, so... Even if this was a hit, he would have blocked one of them. But it doesn't matter. Um, uh, that's one more hit for the uh, Panzer. And he got an Exposed, which is the same as the uh, Exposed that the 88 got. Um, there's some bad ones in here, folks. Uh, the chances are good you're not going to get a bad one. But there's some in here that just straight up kill you. 
Now, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is um, we have medics. In fact, we have two medics, I believe. Oh, yeah, we have two medics. So see that keyword medic right there? Um, the commanders at the end of the week have a repair and replace step. And so at the repair and replace step, you can use your mechanic and medic to remove damage and heal things, right? The medic actually has the ability to uh, resurrect a casualty. So if one of our commanders actually were to die, it, as long as you have a medic, you can actually bring him back. And it's going to be his action. The medic gets to do one action during the repair replace step. So so basically, he gets critically wounded, and then we he survives, is how you want to thematically look at it. And then, of course, the we have a wounded commander right now, and the medic's going to be able to remove that wound just as much. Um, or a medic can reduce two stress. So if you have no wounds and no dead commanders, you could still take two stress off of somebody. So the medic is actually um, quite good. Uh, in fact, I wish I knew it was as good as it seems now. Um, because, uh, you know, the fact that I took two, I'm very proud of that. <laughs> now, the mechanic, it's a similar deal. Uh, the mechanic's going to repair one damage, or it's going to pay for a large, because uh, we have a, this panther is a large, so I'm going to have to pay an SO point at the end of the battle, or I use the mechanic to pay that. And, of course, if I use the mechanic to pay that, then I don't uh, repair any of the damage that's on the tank. Now, the damage on the tank gets repaired with one SO point, so it's a one SO point here or there. I mean, basically, the mechanic is saving you an SO point one way or the other. All right, um, so now we go to do the infantry who's attacking our 88. And I don't even need to roll, well, I still get to roll the defense. And, oh my gosh, right there is the defense of one, so I blocked uh, one of the hits. And it doesn't even matter what I rolled. I rolled a 10 and a 5. But um, the reason I say it doesn't matter is because I have 1, 2, 3, 4 exposed tokens, if you remember. Um, so that adds 2, 4, 6, 8 to his die roll. So he hits twice, but I blocked once. So I only get hit once. And all four of these exposed tokens are going to go away um, and back into the cup. I'm going to assume they don't go into the cup until after we draw this particular damage. So uh, so let's uh, see what we get here. And it's another exposed. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of exposed in the cup. And then I'm going to put these four exposed markers back into the cup um, to help out. And just so you know, um, I had grabbed more than one. Uh, there was a commander KIA that I saw. And there was a casualty. So there's they're in there, folks. Um, in fact, I think there's a mowed down one, which uh, uh, the unit gets destroyed as well as the commander. So some of these just kill the commander. The other ones destroy the unit. Um, you don't want that on week one. You want to sort of build up your SO points a bit if you can. Um, I'm of the opinion that we, uh, we started this a little funky. I think you need to play a little more conservatively. Like, I, I aggressively moved out into the battlefield, and uh, I think you know, we need to just stay back a little bit more and set up a defensive perimeter. So um, I did not play this mission as well as it should have been played. So anyways, we survived. We took some wounds here, but uh, we're still surviving. All of our units are still alive, and now it's our turn. Well, I'm going to start with the MG nest because he only has a range of one and there's only one uh, I infantry in his range. So we're going to go ahead and roll. And he hits with a two. So um, there's the dice. The uh, three does block because uh, the infantry has a defensive three. But we hit with two dice and the other one did not block. So uh, we hit the rifle infantry and he's down. So our 88 is safe, which I think was the biggest... Uh, victory of all here. Next thing I'm going to try is um, I'm going to try the Panzer II and we're going to try to shoot this rifle unit that's one space away. And I'm not going to move into his space because if I do I get a minus one to my roll and I have to hit with a six but my uh, commander at one space away 
gets a minus one to his roll. So I guess it doesn't matter. I could move into his space. Um, I'm just concerned that if I did move into his space, he'd get attacked more. Although replacing a Panzer II is so much cheaper than replacing a Panther. Um, <laughs> that's Actually, I can't even replace the Panther. There is no more Panthers for me to purchase. So I got to take good care of my precious here. Um, so what do I do? Sure, I'm going to move him forward. So he'll get a minus one to his roll. Uh, but I would have gotten a minus one anyways. Um, so there we go. I got a 10, as you can see. So that's fine. Um, and then he has a one, which blocks it. And then I have a seven, which hits. And the three... Oh gosh, the three blocks it. So... He uh, blocked us with both of his rolls. So uh, that blows. I mean, I needed a six to hit with this guy, and I actually hit with both dice. And the jerk still blocked both of them. All right. Well, the Panzer missed. So now I'm going to do the transport truck. I'm not transporting the 88. I'm just going to go up with the transport truck, and we're going to shoot the infantry. I want to kill this infantry. So I may have missed with this roll. Um, first of all, the two blocks. And uh, that five I don't even think hits with the transport. I get a, uh, I do get a, oh, I get a plus two if I attack from one space away. So I would keep the transport back here. Uh, but even with a plus two attack, yeah, because I moved. Um, yeah, I didn't hit. I needed a six. So I didn't get a six. I do get a plus two to my attack, but I get a minus two because I moved. So uh, that five was a natural roll. And even if he would have hit, this blocks it because the infantry blocks at a three. So that's been a pesky infantry so far. Um, so now I'm going to shoot with my 88. And the 88 is here. And he shoots three spaces away. One, two, three, or one, two, three. Um, the key thing about the 88 is he has a spotter and marksman. This guy is in light cover, which means he has plus one to his defense value. But the 88 ignores cover because of his marksman capability. So I'm going to shoot this tank because uh, that's going to be harder for my panther to hit anyways. So I'm shooting at this tank who's in cover and I get to ignore the cover. So you can see there's a seven and a six, right? But his one here blocks the seven, um, and then uh, his other defense is a four, which would have blocked us. But remember, I have the marksman ability, and so my marksman ability um, reduced his cover. And so his defense is only three now. And so that was the right call. So uh, we, we did a hit, and this tank is toast. Okay, now I got my panther, and my panther is going to move and we're going to attack this tank and try to take that down. And uh, why am I moving all the time? I do get a minus one to my attack, but um, this is the guy that has the close combat bonus. And with the close combat bonus, he gets to roll an extra attack die. And so you can see his defense dice is nothing, right? And then we have a, a two, a two, and an eight. So it took all three dice to hit him. <laughs> um, I would have hit with a... Oh, actually, I get a plus three to my attack die. I needed a four to hit. I got a minus one for moving, uh, but I got a plus three because of my commander. So anyways, tank is destroyed is the uh, important point of the day. So we end another combat round, and now we're down to four turns. Okay, so I, again, I know you. it's really hard to keep track maybe from the angle of the camera um, on what you see here. Here's what we got. Everything on the screen is dead. There's an infantry unit here, and there's a tank on this side of the river and an armored car on this side of the river. That's all the enemy has is those three things. The value of them is three plus two is five plus one is six. Six is um, now at half strength. So the uh, enemy normally gets minus two to its uh, combat roll, 
but because of this campaign, it's only a minus one. And I'm pointing that out because if this is your first game, I don't want you to think that it's always minus one. Um, it's only minus one because of the Italy campaign. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, it's gonna be their turn because they go first. And like I said, we have to take a minus one to whatever they roll. I rolled a 10 for them, <coughs> which <laughs> minus one just means it's a nine. And so they are, they're hot to trot. So the tank is doing what's called an AP advance. So an AP advance is they're going to advance closer to a friendly unit that is attacked by armor piercing. So uh, the tank, um, for example, is going to just cross the river to our side because uh, that's, that's his whole movement. And then he's going to attack. Now, he moved. So since he's moving and attacking, he gets a minus one to his die roll. So that will uh, reduce his ability to hit us. Now, the armored car has to do a similar thing, uh, but what he's doing is uh, he's advancing into our space, and the armored car is going to go after the Panzer II because that's um, an easier target than the Panther. Okay? All right. Um, then the, uh, the infantry is doing what's called an HE advance, and uh, rifles treat this order as an AP advance when at range one to an AP target. So they are in an AP spot. So they're in the same spot as the Panzer II. So the rifle unit is going to stay right where he's at. Okay? All right. So let's start with the uh, tank. And just as a reminder, the tank attacks with a two. But he advanced one. So he gets a minus one to his roll. So he's going to hit with a three. Uh, that's the situation with the tank, and he's shooting our Panzer II. And that is a hit, and that is a hit, and those are both no blocks. So the Panzer II has taken two hits. So we got another gun damage, which thankfully does not uh, kill him. And then we got an MG damage. And machine gun is cannot attack at range zero. So he can't attack at range two or three, and he cannot attack at range zero. So the Panzer II is getting pounded right now, and that's okay. Um, that's what happens. And the Panzer II, if all the, of all the units, uh, that's the one that we're okay with taking the damage. Uh, and now we got to deal with the uh, armored car. So the armored car is also going to attack the Panzer II. The armored car, though, needed a 7 to hit because uh, its armor piercing was not that good. And you can see that 2 and 1 is not going to cut the mustard. And since the armored car moved, it would have gotten a minus 1 to its die roll. All right, so um, no hits there. And then we go to the infantry. Now, the infantry is trying to hit the, uh, the tank. The infantry has to roll an 8. Uh, they're not very good against uh, armored units, but they do prioritize armored units uh, if they're next to one. Um, so, uh, so anyways, we got a, uh, a 10, so that's as good of a hit as there is going to be. And then we have a two, so that's a miss. And then we have a 10 on this one and we have a, uh, this was, it was a two, but it doesn't matter. He only defends with a one. So, so, uh, that's a hit on the, uh, our Panzer two. So we're drawing for another hit, and I got suspension and one stress. So I think well, no matter what, he's taking one stress. So let's do that. And then suspension says he cannot move or enter battle, um, and if he gets two of them, he's destroyed. So Panzer II is definitely getting his work cut out for him. But it doesn't matter. We're going to toast them this turn. So I'm going to start with my 88. And the 88 is going to shoot at their um, their armored car. So here we go. 88 is shooting two spaces away. And ooh, this was a 1. Um, the good news is defense didn't block anything. All right, so the 88 hits with a four. 
but since I'm shooting two spaces away, I get a minus one to my die roll. However, my commander gives me a plus two. So that four becomes a six, and then back down to five. Five is greater than four. Uh, we hit armored targets with our 88, and so this armored car is toast. And that's the way it was supposed to be. Then with the uh, panther, I am moving into his space there. And yes, I take a minus one to my die roll. And there's a three, there's a one, and a nine, and a two. Uh, this two blocks a hit. So um, let's figure this out. Oh, I get to roll an extra die. And there's a 10. So uh, uh, that's at least a hit there. And then it's blocked by this one, right? This three, I get a plus three because I'm in the same space, but I get a minus one because I moved. So let me look. Three plus three is six, minus one is five. I hit armored targets with a four. So tank is destroyed. Panthers are good, folks. That's the lesson of the day. And then I have this pesky uh, infantry. That's the only way I left. My MG unit is too far away. So we're going to move the MG unit. But if I move an attack on the same... He's a cautious... Ah, let me just show you. The MG units uh, get minus two attack when moving and two stress if they move an attack. However, this guy is cautious, so he can't move an attack. So all I can do is move the MG unit... Uh, one space closer, like that, and then I'm not doing anything. The 88 is not moving. The Panzer can't move, and it can't attack at zero. And so the only thing that's uh, left is my little transport unit is going to go into here. Uh, or no, he's going to stay right where he's at. He's not going to move, and uh, we're going to attack with our transport unit. Now, the transport unit gets a plus two because of his uh, Bach. And he needs to hit with a six. My camera disconnected again. So he hits with a six. There's the six that we were looking for. We get a plus two. Um, this two we ignore, because remember, it's the blue die. And the blue die is an eight. So infantry is gone. And uh, I know it's hard to see, but the entire board is wiped. We, uh, we wiped out all the units. And we did that with uh, on turn with four turns left to go. I think technically we were at three turns left to go. I may have forgot to move the turn marker. It doesn't matter. We had plenty of turns left. Okay, so post combat. Oh, it said infantry commanders suffer one extra stress when moving and attacking. That was our um, our card that was affecting this mission. Uh, our infantry commanders never moved and attacked. In fact, we only have one infantry commander, and he's cautious, and he can't move and attack. So uh, now we got to draw another event card on the way back. So post combat, add two to the defense rolls of all enemy units in the next battle. Oh my gosh, uh, that's awful. All right, I'm going to just set it aside here. I don't know where exactly to put it, but I'll just put it here. So yeah, when we go to resolve the next battle, we're going to have to deal with that. Um, I just want to say that um, I only had five units on this mission, and it we got lucky. I, I mean, if I would have drawn anything out of this cup that was different, um, we could have been losing units. We could have been losing commanders. Uh, this was not a good showing for the first battle. So we got lucky, and if you uh, put yourself in the same position I put myself in, I would say that, I don't know, six, seven times out of ten, uh, you would end up in a worse spot than I just did. I think, um, I think I defied the odds a little bit on this one. Okay, so uh, that, and that, uh, this card here just blows. I don't like that card at all. Um, okay, next it says battalion status. The battalion is destroyed, so 14A is gone. And just like I did with the previous game, I put the destroyed battalions over here, just as like a little um, thing. And then I um, I actually put them in a pile to show that uh, I destroyed it, so that way I can keep track of victory points, you know, things like that. 
Um, and then it says record commander stress and record commander experience. Now, uh, there's a couple of interesting things about this particular game versus most other leader games. Uh, most leader games, the sh amount of stress that you get is based on um, the mission and like where it's located. So if you're flying deeper into enemy territory, uh, you would get more stress. That's not the case with this one. Uh, and of course, uh, Sherman leader. With this one, uh, you're gaining uh, two stress all the time. Doesn't matter where the battle is. So on week one, for example, uh, yeah, we'll just say week one, okay? We just did 14A. And I'm going to try to use the slash nomenclature because we're going to do two missions, right? And then for 14A, um, all of our commanders gain two stress. Now, you do get to subtract the, um, the cool value. So, for example, our Panther commander here has a cool value of two, so he gains no stress for the battle. Um, this guy has a cool value of one, so he's going to gain one stress. So we're going to add a stress to Gerver. He's up to three. Uh, our, um, our MG Nest guy is going to get one. And then Vogel gets two. No, he gets three. Um, because he actually has a, a value of minus one. <laughs> so that gives him an extra plus one. Uh, jerk. And then um, Bach has a cool value of zero. So he's going to get two stress. So uh, we got stress on all of our guys now. And uh, let's get back to this. So um, as far as experience points go, I think this is exactly like Thunderbolt Apache Leader. You're going to get one for going on the mission. And I'm looking it up right now. But you get one for going on the mission. You're going to get one more for destroying the battalion. Now, in Thunderbolt Apache Leader, you get a third one if you destroy every single unit. I don't think that's the case with this one. Um, one for participating. If the battalion was destroyed, get one more. And that's it. And then, of course, if, uh, if the card gives you more. So in this case, the, uh, the battalion card does give us more. Uh, the battalion card says plus one experience. So everybody's getting three experience who was on this mission. So Beck, for example, is going to get three experience. And who else do we got? We got Gerber. He's going to get three. And then Seidel. He gets three. And Vogel gets three. And Bach. Three. Okay, so now with that said, um, Seidel here, who's green, has three experience points. He levels up. So I need to grab the average ability for him. So Seidel just improved from zero to three to zero to four. Um, and then he goes from plus zero, plus zero, to plus one, plus one. He's still cautious though. All right, so Seidel improved and uh, this is gone. And Vogel also levels up. And so I also got to put for Seidel, um, hmm, how am I going to do this? I'm going to cross this three out and just put a one over here. Uh, to show he has one experience point. And um, um, now, or no, he has zero. So he actually spent all of his. The guy who has one now is Vogel. Vogel, we're going to cross out his three, and we're going to put a one for him. Because Vogel here um, only needed two experience points to level up. And he was a recruit. So he's going to flip over to the green side, which is also a two. And uh, he's no longer a minus one for cool. So his cool was minus one. 
now it becomes a zero. So he won't be taking extra stress all the time, which is good. All right. So uh, that's him. And that's it. Um, that's all we do. So uh, now we got a rinse and repeat for the next battalion that we're attacking. All these tiles go away. We put all these these units away, and uh, we got to do uh, another round of battle for the next battalion. And so this game is just a slog of over and over again having these little tactical battles on uh, the map. Um, I have to confess that the river and the the road adds a little bit of extra flavor to it. Um, I think the the gripe that these games get is that uh, you know with Thunderbolt attached Apache leader, you have those mountain ridges that make the difference in the game, right? This game you don't have that. This game is a little bit more, you know, straight up attacking, uh, you know, across the board. I, I would say. Uh, I mean, for me personally, uh, the Thunderbolt Apache leader is a bit more exciting. Um, the thing that I think is more exciting about this one is there's a big diversity in the types of units you have, and the commanders add so much extra flavor to that. So this game, I think, has more exciting commanders and and like combined arms capability. Um, like I think this is more fun than those assault missions, right, on Thunderbolt Apache leader. Um, but I, you know, the thing that, that prevents me from playing this game more than I do is that, um, you know, just in one week, we're going to be tearing this apart and setting it up again and going through all these little machinations and dice rolls and making sure the defense die cancels out the other die. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess just after a while, it becomes like an accounting exercise and, and I'm not finding it as much. It's not as much fun. I'll just come out and say it. Um, but is it good? Yes, it is good. And I think that's where the, you know, like target for today, B-17, Queen of the Skies, uh, Picket Duty. There's a lot of games that are in the wargaming world that, um, you know, you're flying a plane, you're, you're in a sub for Silent Hunters or whatever. Um, you you basically roll dice, look at a chart, and see what happens to you. I mean, you're you're in a story, right? And you're you're basically playing the story. And I think some people really like the narrative that that creates. This game has a narrative. Uh, that's the thing about it. It's there's definitely a narrative here, and with the way the commanders interact with the units, um, that's where the strategy comes in. Like the fact that we have medics, or the fact that I took a close combat guy. Um, like my little panther here with the close combat ability, I think you saw how that was a nice synergy, right? I was able to go into the hex and really mess them up. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm trying to say is that there's there's strategy in that. And um, anyways, I'm not going to bitch about it anymore. We're only in week one. So uh, I am going to end the video, though, because we're at an hour. And uh, we'll start the next one for the second battalion in uh, week one. So... Thanks for watching and stay awesome.